Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 13 review. Uh, I am absolutely shattered. Uh, normally I watch wrestling at like 1 in the morning uh, because I watch WWE here in the UK. Um, but this show was in Japan and it started at like 8am which should have been better but I am just not used to that time. Uh, so I am absolutely shattered. <laughs> so uh, if I fall asleep halfway through this review, then please accept my apologies. Uh, but this was a great show. There was no way I was going to fall asleep during Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, maybe didn't get to the heights of previous years, uh, but the main events certainly delivered. Um, and this show felt very much like it was all about change it felt like new japan were trying to get a bit of stability they were trying to build for the future uh, very interesting that young books cody kenny all lost even the gorillas of destiny lost as well um there's a lot going on at the moment new japan are having to worry about wwe taking their talent they're also having to worry about now AEW All Elite Wrestling. We know this brand new promotion is on its way. Spearheaded by Cody and the Young Bucks. Uh, Kenny could be tempted to join. Who knows about Gorillas of Destiny? Uh, I honestly don't know what kind of relationship they've got, but AEW is going to need talent, and it wouldn't surprise me if they were having some conversations with New Japan Pro Wrestling stars to see if they could get them to move over. Uh, so I would imagine New Japan are doing whatever they can to tie their talent down right now um, because it is a very turbulent time. Um, but with that being said, uh, this was still a very good show. Uh, I think there's a lot to be optimistic about when it comes to New Japan, even if the elite go, or when the elite go, um, and even if they take a few people with them, uh, I do think there's some stars that New Japan are building uh, for the future. People like Ishii, people like Jay White, but we will come to all of that. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the pre-show. I've got my notes here. Uh, this felt like a lifetime ago. We've got Chaos uh, taking on Finley, Cobb and Nagata. Taking on Most Violent Players and Taguchi. Uh, taking on Suzuki Gun. Taking on the Elite. This, of course, was a gauntlet match. Uh, number one contenders. Uh, gauntlet match for the never uh, six man championship and uh, it felt like uh, this show as we said was overshadowed by AEW because we knew the elite weren't going to win this match um, so and that's how it went uh, so they were the first team eliminated here most violent players and Taguchi end up victorious uh, getting victory in the final kind of part of this match over Suzuki Gun and uh, it felt like Roll Up City that's what I've put here because like most of these little matches within the gauntlet match ended because of Roll Up uh, so not not the best match I've ever seen um, but uh, fine for something that was just on the pre-show uh, let's move to the main card uh, and what a way to start the show. This was the Never Openweight Championship. Kota Ibushi against Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay uh, grew up idolising Kota Ibushi, who is, I think in his like mid-30s, but he looks about 12. Um, but it's amazing uh, to think that Ospreay idolised uh, Kota. Um, Kota surely is going to go on to bigger and better things, um, because... Uh, Osprey picked up the victory here. Uh, it came 18 minutes 13. Um, and uh, yeah, I reckon this was about four stars uh, out of five. It was fast paced, uh, high flying, loads of fun spots. Perfect way to start the show. And actually, this was the best match of the show for quite some time uh, so yeah great opener the big talking point here uh, was that Kota Ibushi had to be stretchered out 
Uh, I don't know if they're going to just use that as a way to explain the fact that uh, that's why he lost. You know, he gave his all to the point where he just couldn't even continue. Uh, or if it was actually a legitimate injury. Um, couldn't see anything online about it. Um, people just speculating. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully Kota Ibushi isn't legitimately injured. Because 2019 will be a massive year for him. Whatever he does. Next up, we've got the three-way for the Tag Team Junior Heavyweight Championships. Uh, L.I.J. getting the victory here, uh, beating Suzuki Gun and Rapongi 3K in just 6 minutes 51. Uh, L.I.J., their newest member, Shingo, uh, getting the victory. And uh, that's probably the big talking point, uh, him helping them win gold. Uh, this was actually a fantastic night for LIJ. Uh, and not only that, it's worth mentioning every single title changed hands tonight on this card. Uh, what a crazy show this was. <laughs> Uh, but sadly, this wasn't really a crazy match. Uh, I only gave it about two and three quarter stars. Next up, we've got the Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship. Ishii, who had held that title for quite some time now, uh, was going up against Zack Sabre Jr., uh, someone who had held that title before. Uh, this was a very fun match. A little bit similar to the opener in the way that it was nicely paced. Um, and uh, not as high-flying, but still a very strong match. Um, and, yeah, I think that uh, Zack Sabre Jr. winning by submission frees Ishii up to now go on to bigger things. Uh, New Japan are definitely losing big names, uh, and they're going to need to find some new stars from somewhere. Ishii has kind of been on the back burner uh, for quite some time, a little bit like Kota. Um, you know, maybe now they're both going to be free uh, to go on to bigger and better things. Next up, another three-way match for another tag team championship. This time, the heavyweight tag team championships. Uh, LIJ against Gorillas of Destiny, who were the champions going into this against the Young Bucks. Obviously, knew the Young Bucks weren't going to win because of the whole... All Elite Wrestling thing. Uh, so it was down to LIJ or Gorillas of Destiny. I really thought Gorillas of Destiny would retain. But LIJ again. Uh, LIJ getting another victory. This was a massive night for them. Um, and this match was sadly just so-so again. Uh, I have scored it three and a half stars. Uh, Young Bucks were the team that took the pin here as well, so uh, really not a good night for the Elite. Um, but, you know, it did a job. Uh, I think this is going to continue. I'm sure we're going to see LIJ against Gorillas of Destiny. Maybe a New Year's uh, dash. Uh, this is a feud that's going to keep rumbling. Next up, maybe the most disappointing match of the night, Cody versus Juice Robinson for the IWGP United States Championship. Clear that Cody uh, still suffering from his recent injury. Um, just just couldn't, couldn't perform like what Cody can perform. Uh, it's no criticism of Cody. Um, he just, he's not back to 100% yet. Yet he needed uh, to obviously perform in this match. Lots of smoke and mirrors, lots of distractions, Brandy Rhodes obviously getting involved, um, the championship getting used, um, so yeah, lots of ha things happening, um, but sadly, not much in the way of quality, um, so this match was just a bit of a sideshow, um, I think this was one of the worst matches on the card up to this point, uh, I only scored it two and a half uh, stars, um, Cody loses the championship, uh, Juice Robinson regaining that IWGP United States Championship. He is so over. I feel like he could be one for the future, but I don't think his time is uh, quite yet. Next up, we got the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, Kushida against Ishimori. Kushida's entrance was amazing. Um, so you had uh, a small mini version of Kushida and uh, Doc Brown appears uh, and then there's all smoke and when the smoke clears, Kushida was there. Um, that, that mini version of Kushida, the mask 
that that person was wearing is the most realistic mask I have ever seen. It was stunning. It was amazing. I don't even know how they did it. Uh, so, yeah, very, very cool. Thankfully, the match was just as good as well. Um, I thought Kushida was going to win this. Uh, there's rumours he could be going to WWE. Triple H is really hot on Kushida. Uh, loves the theatre. Uh, loves the in-ring work as well. But such a great all-round performer. Maybe Kushida goes to WWE. I don't think he will. Um, I, I feel like this is just part of a bigger story, or maybe even freeing up Kushida to go on to bigger and better things. Um, so I'm not sure that I see Kushida going to WWE, but very interesting that they are, you know, interested. <laughs> uh, they, were, they got Nakamura. Uh, who's to say they don't get Kushida? Back to the match, though. Great little match. Uh, and uh, I reckon this was about three and three quarter stars. Uh, Ishimori just would not give up. Uh, kept getting into, you know, positions where it looked like he was going to have to uh, submit, but just kept finding a way out. Persevered. Got the victory in the end. Next match was for no title. It didn't need to be. The internet freaked out anyway. Okada against Jay White. Switchblade Jay White. And the internet broke before anything even happened. Because Okada went back to wearing shorts. Uh, and that was enough for people to freak out over. Uh, this was obviously a grudge match. These two hate each other. Um, obviously Switchblade Jay White was in chaos. He then turned, he betrayed Okada, uh, and so this was kind of the blow-off to that. Um, Switchblade, Jay White, is now the leader of Bullet Club, um, and he is positioned for a massive 2019. This only just furthered that, though, because he got a clean victory, clean victory! Over arguably the greatest wrestler in the world. Over Okada. Uh, again, internet was shocked. Internet was broken. Uh, people couldn't believe it. Uh, I'm not sure many people thought it would go this way. I think people thought that Jay White, you know, might get the victory. But not a clean victory. And, uh, yeah, wow. They are really, really going all in on Jay White. This match was great. This match was the match of the night up to this point, just overtaking uh, that Kota Ibushi uh, match at the very start against Will Ospreay. Um, but I, I reckon this was around about four stars as well. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with Jay White going forward. I, I totally expect Tanahashi versus Jay White at some point this year. Just a couple of matches left to go. Uh, next up, Chris Jericho taking on Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Uh, this match was brilliant. Uh, just better, I would say, than Okada versus Jay White making this now the match of the night so far. Uh, it was more brutal. Uh, there was kendo sticks, there was chairs, there was code breakers, Destinos, of course. Um, but that DDT on the outside, that DDT when Jericho spiked Naito on that table, it's just brutal. I honestly thought he had done some serious damage to his neck. Uh, the table just did not give. Um, so, yeah, it was it was crazy. Great match. Didn't know which way it was going to go. Kind of thought that Naito would get the victory. Kind of, again, feels like Jericho's time in New Japan might be coming to an end. They got a bit of a buzz about him being there. Um, but we've not seen the Intercontinental Championship at all, like, in the past 12 months. So, uh, kind of, we kind of needed it back. It was right that they switched the title on to Naito. And we got a great match out of it. Jericho reinventing himself again. He's just like this fantastic heel. More villain. Um, just will go to lengths. The heels in WWE, for example, just don't go to. Mainly because it's a PG era in WWE. But he's got a bit more freedom in New Japan. Um, it's been really fun to see uh, Jericho exploring his character further. Uh, again, someone else. Who knows what comes next. With Jericho, he could stay in New Japan for a little bit. He could go to AEW. He could return to WWE. He could go to the moon. Who knows? <laughs> 
Chris Jericho, I don't, I'm not even sure even Chris Jericho knows what he's doing. Final match and the match of the night. Match of the year contender. We say it every single year. Uh, and that, of course, was Kenny Omega against Tanahashi for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. What a match. What a match. Absolutely incredible. I saw people on Twitter, maybe they were just a bit giddy, saying that they would take this over any of the Omega versus Okada matches. I didn't feel that way. Uh, it's certainly a bona fide five star, maybe even more, um, but I don't see it rivaling uh, some of those matches that Okada and Omega had. Uh, but still, just you can't take anything away. This was absolutely fantastic. Um, it really pushed Tanahashi uh, to kind of places that he'd not been before. You know, there was table spots and things. And uh, it just felt like Tanahashi was having to modernise in a way. Uh, it was cool though, because it was like Kenny Omega... Um, the, the current best in the world, again, you could argue, uh, against Tanahashi, who is, you know, one of the biggest legends in New Japan history, a seven-time champion, now eight-time champion, and the first man to actually successfully cash in his G1 briefcase uh, at the Tokyo Dome. Uh, and as we said, you know, back and forth, didn't know which way this was going to go. It's not set in stone that Kenny is going to go to AEW, like the Young Bucks and Cody. Uh, it's also, you know, not set in stone. He's going to WWE, although there's big rumours he could be going there. Apparently big rumours they have offered him crazy money. Crazy money. I hope that's true. Uh, he really would bring... He really would bring something. Uh, I can't even put my finger on it, but he would bring something to WWE and they need that right now. Um, so yeah, I really do hope he goes there. I know a lot of people would be concerned, but uh, I think, look what they've done with AJ. I think they've treated AJ very well, so I think they would do the same with Kenny. Um, this, as I said, solid five stars. Young Bucks were in uh, Kenny's corner um, and it was uh, 39 minutes 14, uh, had everything that you would expect. Uh, false finishes and drama and all of that great stuff. I mean, I'm sure you saw it. It was a fantastic match. Uh, up there with match of the year, as we said. And this whole event was easy to watch. Felt a little shorter than usual as well. Kind of raced through the undercard. And then we spent a bit of time with the kind of final three matches. Which was fine. I, I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't like those kind of pay-per-view shows that go five, six hours. I think this was around about the four-hour mark, uh, which, you know, felt very comfortable. Um, so, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This, of course, was a successful show, but where do you think these people are going now? What is happening next? That is the big talking point at the moment. Uh, what does the future hold for New Japan? What does the future hold for the Elite? What does the future hold for Kenny Omega? Is he going to be in the Royal Rumble? God, I hope so. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye for now.